Thank you for coming once again to Heart Mountain Church. This is Heart Mountain Ministries, and I am Pastor Rob Fisk. I've got to tell you, I have agonized over this message. I've been thinking and praying about it for days because I want to get it right. This is about forgiveness. (laughs) The title being, How Could I Possibly Forgive? Provocative title, isn't it? Yeah, because it's really important. Here's what's on my heart. I want you to see my heart today. I want you to receive the love of God that's in this message because forgiving really benefits you. Oh, it's so, so important. I'm going to have Linda on, Lord willing, next week because she's got a wonderful testimony about forgiveness. (laughs) So let me tell you the things that we're going to cover, Lord willing, in the next week or two or three, don't know. How could I possibly, possibly forgive him? or her you don't know what they did to me yeah it's pretty hard sometimes but it's doable and i'm going to give you tools from the word of god that's going to help you and make you able to forgive it's going to be so wonderful you're going to find such peace and love and joy in your heart so four things i like to cover is How could I possibly forgive him or her? How could God possibly forgive me? (laughs) Wow. How could I possibly forgive God? Mm Mm-hmm. We'll talk. And how could I possibly forgive myself? Pretty hard sometimes, but doable. Okay, let's get started. Do I have to forgive? Pastor, do I have to forgive? Yes. Absolutely. Listen, two statements. Unforgiveness is a luxury you can't afford. Forgiveness is a gift that keeps on giving. I call unforgiveness a luxury because, you know, sometimes it just feels good to be angry and upset and go on. But it's blocking your blessings from God. It really, truly is. And I'll prove this all to you in the Word of God. You know, man shall not live by bread alone or by your own opinions, but by the Word of God. So when you hear something in the Word of God that contradicts something you've been taught or something you think, it's time to change your mind. It's called renewing your mind. I tell you, that's the quickest way to peace with God that could ever know is renewing your mind. Let me say this, sister... I know it's hard to forgive, and I know they don't deserve it, but neither did we. So I'm going to give you these tools, and you're going to be able to forgive, and you're going to love it. So I mentioned my wife has a tremendous testimony of forgiveness. It was just a real quick synopsis, and then she'll give you the details. An ugly divorce, anger, you know, bitterness on both sides. But one Wednesday night, She came to church and heard this message, this exact same message that I'm going to give to you. And she decided to act on the word of God. And she decided to forgive. So she contacted her ex-husband, started the ball rolling. One thing led to another. Beautiful things happened. And eventually, we were, Linda and I were invited to stay in the home of her ex-husband and his new wife you know overnight as we were uh, bringing their daughter down to see him you know what that doesn't happen in the world but it does happen in the kingdom of love in the kingdom of god what a miracle and you can have these miracles too so here's the message are you ready how could i possibly forgive so and so You know, sometimes it's a process. And as a pastor, I want to tell you that. Because so many times the preacher will preach on forgiveness and everybody come to the altar right now and everybody forgive everybody right now. Sometimes it's not that quick and easy. Sometimes it is. But I just want you to know, don't feel guilty if you've had a hard time forgiving. We're going to give you some scriptures and some reasons to forgive. You're going to love it. So basically, forgiveness is what Christianity is all about. God forgiving sinful people so he can be with them. Amen. Pardon me. 
God is quick to forgive. And here's a great scripture, Psalm 86, 5. For thou, Lord, art good and ready to forgive and plenteous in mercy unto all them that call upon thee. Read it again. For thou, Lord, are you, O Lord, you're good. And you are ready to forgive. See, David knew the Lord. You're ready to forgive and you're plenteous in mercy unto all them that call upon thee. So before I dive in, let me ask you this question. Are you ready to be like Father God, who is love and who is plenteous and plenteous in mercy and ready to forgive? Are you ready? I think you are. I think your heart is tired of holding on to these things and it's time to let it to lay it down. This is this is so important, this message. So here we go. Let's go to Romans chapter five, verses eight and nine. In the New International Version, it says this, but God demonstrates his own love for us in this. <laughs> While we were still sinners, Christ died for us. Stop. Think about that for a moment. Has somebody sinned against you? Yeah. Yeah. We've all had that. Some worse sins. And anyway, we've all had people sin against us, and some of them were pretty severe. But the Bible says, read the scripture again, that God demonstrated his own love for us in this. While we were still sinners, Christ died for us, which means he forgave us. Since we have now been justified by his blood, how much more shall we be saved from God's wrath through him? So since God our Father loves us and forgave us, we ought to be just like him as children of the Most High God and love others and forgive others. You'll see how to do it here shortly. Boy, I don't know. How, I, can't, I can't tell you what a big subject this is. It's one of the reasons I went back and forth over what to present first, and I've got so much material. Oh, my goodness. And it's all beneficial to we, his saints, because it's all his holy word. And I'm not going to say I can cover this in one message. I won't demean the subject by that. Forgiveness is such a huge topic. But let me start by illustrating uh, with this. Uh, start. I'm sorry. Let me start by illustrating how important this is with the testimony for one of my favorite pastors. He testified that early in his ministry, he had just taken a new church to pastor. When a lady of the congregation challenged him with a spiritual question, came right up to him as he was going to the parsonage for the first time. She said, Pastor, there's a family here in church that's very unfaithful. <laughs> they come a few weeks, and just when you think they're going to stay faithful, they stop coming for several weeks. Then, just as you think you'll never see them again, here they come. The pastor said, you haven't asked me anything. You've told me something. Then she said, okay, here's my question. Anytime they need healing, they ask for prayer, and they always get healed. She said, but in my family, we're in church every time the door is open, and yet anytime we ask for prayer for healing, nobody gets it. Why? <laughs> Do you know the answer? Pastor said, well, not knowing the family and just being new here, I'd have to guess. I'd say that the family that's unfaithful is also quite friendly and easy to get, to get along with. Also, based on what you've told me, I, I'd guess that your family, which included her mother and father and siblings, is quick to judge, holds grudges, and hardly ever forgives. The lady's eyes got wide as saucers. How did you know who told you? The pastor said, I don't know the families yet, but I do know the Bible. And then he opened the Bible to Mark eleven twenty three through 26. I invite you to do the same thing, Mark eleven twenty three through 26. Here we go. So Jesus answered them. I'm sorry, I'm starting in verse 22. So Jesus answered them, have faith in God. For assuredly, I say to you, whoever says to this mountain, be removed and be cast into the sea, and does not doubt in his heart, but believes that those things that he says will come to pass, he will have whatever he says. Great faith scriptures. Here's, here's the prayer version in verse 24. Therefore, I say to you, what things uh, that you ask when you pray, whatever things you ask when you pray, believe that you receive them and you will have them. Again, that's the secret to faith, praying and then saying what you believe. And it's, it's another, another message for another time. But faith works, and Jesus told us how to operate it. But then he went right on in verses 25 and 26. Check this out. And whenever you stand praying, 
If you have anything against anyone, do what? Forgive them. And we start that again. And whenever you stand praying, and you know you can't stand all day and all night and all the next day, that means you've got to start forgiving sometime. And whenever you stand praying, if you have anything against anyone, forgive him that your Father in heaven may also forgive you your trespasses. But if you, and Jesus said this, but if you do not forgive, neither will your Father in heaven forgive your trespasses. Wow. So one of the biggest blocks from receiving anything from God is unforgiveness. You may be wondering why some of your blessings haven't come in. You may be wondering why some of your prayers haven't been answered. This is a really good place to look. Let's keep going. Let me give you some tools. I'll give you some uh, boundaries and parameters for forgiveness too. First of all, (laughs) the Bible literally says you must forgive everyone for anything they've done. I looked it up one time in the Greek and it said you must forgive every person, place, institution, thing for anything, a wit, anything that has been done to you. This is God's word. And again, it's to your benefit to obey the word of God. I know it feels good to hang on to unforgiveness, but when you let it go, you're going to feel even better and you're going to release the blessings of God. Mm -mm -mm. So, and if you don't forgive everyone for anything that they've done, you will not receive all that God has for you. This is not a harsh statement. This is just cause and effect truth don't turn me off because you'll find it is such a wonderful thing when you actually do these things and then just before i get into the uh, rather long scripture about it uh, the, the main one for today i also want to say that there's another side of the coin just because you must forgive one forgive someone you don't have to stay their victim or stay where you can reach or control you and i'll try to explain that more next week uh there's a great scripture in proverbs that says that uh he that sees trouble coming hides himself so it's called boundaries you forgive somebody if they reciprocate fantastic you got the relationship back if they don't you still forgive them but you still put up a boundary and you don't allow them to come to the place that they can harm you or hurt you or control you but you stay forgiving it's it, we'll explain it more next week lord willing so as the scripture plainly declares we must forgive everything everyone for everything that's been done or said so if you have a problem forgiving someone who's done so much evil and harm to you it helps to consider how much jesus has forgiven all right let's go into this wonderful scripture here we go it's matthew 18 21 gonna read it for the young's literal translation it's really interesting matthew 18 21 then peter having come near to him that's jesus said sir how often shall my brother sin against me and i forgive him seven times (laughs) way to go peter (laughs) and jesus said to him i do not say unto thee seven times but till seventy times seven and by the way that's a day so let's keep going because of this because this was the reign of the heavens likened unto a man a king who did his let's see who did will to take reckoning with his servants and he having begun to take an account there was brought near to one uh, to him one debtor of a myriad of talents this man owed the king like a million dollars and he having nothing to pay his lord did command him to be sold and his wife and the children and all whatever he had and payment to be made remember folks this is not the us of a this is another kingdom and another another place they could do those things they could sell you for debt and it's a terrible place to be i'm glad i live in this land the servant then having fallen down was bowing to him saying sir have patience with me and i will pay thee all (laughs) and the lord of that servant having been moved with compassion boy doesn't that sound like our father god he did release him and the debt he forgave him the whole thing he's now released and he doesn't owe anything what compassion the king showed just like our father but matthew 18 28 and that servant having come forth found one of his fellow servants who was owing him a hundred denarii and having laid hold he took him by the throat saying pay me that which you owest 
and his fellow servant then, having fallen down at his feet, just like he did to the king, was calling on him, saying, Have patience with me, and I'll pay thee all. And, and apparently he didn't owe him very much. Uh, when I heard one preacher say he owed him 20 bucks, but be that as it may, it was a lot less than what he'd been forgiven. Be patient with me, and I'll pay thee all. But verse 1830, and he would not, but having gone away, he cast him into the prison till he might pay that which was owing. And his fellow servants, having seen, having seen the things that were done, were grieved exceedingly, and having come, showed fully to the Lord, to their Lord, all the things that were done. Hmm. Then having called him, his Lord saith to him, Evil servant, all that debt I did forgive thee, seeing thou didst call another would you asked me to verse 33 did it not behoove also thee to have dealt kindly with thy fellow servant as i also dealt kindly with thee and having now been wroth angry his lord delivered him to the inquisitors till he might pay all that was owing to him so the whole debt was restored put back on him what a terrible thing to do, to not forgive. And because of not forgiving someone a small debt, to have your great debt put back upon you. This is why unforgiveness blocks the blessings of God. So also my heavenly Father will do if you may not forgive each one his brother from your hearts their trespasses. So last verse, uh, you have to know this. In Romans 5.5, 5, I'm jumping right in the middle of a phrase, but and hope does not disappoint us because God's love has been poured into our hearts through the Holy Spirit, which has been given to us. The Holy Spirit has, if you're born again, you've got the love of God right here. And what are you going to do with it? Let's let it out. Let's let it flow. Let's begin to forgive this. Again, like I said, this is a process. We're going to deal with this for probably two or three weeks. This is going to be a process, but I want you to start today. I want you to love God today. And I want you to begin to consider that because God forgave you all that huge sin that we had, what is that sin that someone has sinned against us? Really nothing in comparison. We sent Jesus to the cross and he died for us to forgive us. Can we not begin to forgive others? Let's just let that love begin to flow out. I, so I say this to you by the Holy Spirit. Let that love that the Holy Spirit has put in your heart begin to control your thoughts, words, and actions. Father, I pray for my friends. I pray for those that are coming here for the Word of God. That they're hearing that it's a requirement, but they're also hearing, Lord, that it's to their benefit. Great benefit to forgive. I pray, Father, that you would help us. Give us that strength and power. Help us to access the love which is in our heart. Let it rise up and let us begin to pray for those whom we have unforgiveness towards. Let us begin to ask, Lord, that you bless them. Even if we say it through clenched teeth, Lord, bless them in Jesus' name, we get started. We start this process of forgiveness. Help us, Father, because we can't do it in ourselves. Forgiveness comes from your love, and it's divine. It's not human. So I pray that this divine power, this divine love would raise, rise up, and everyone listening to the sound of my voice today, that they might begin to forgive and be set free in Jesus' name. Mm -mm. Amen. Listen, before I let you go, I keep uh, forgetting some things here. Don't forget to like and comment because apparently the more comments we get uh, we rise up higher and people can find us easier and the word of god goes forth you understand and then please share this video with someone that you think really might benefit you know someone that might benefit from this i'm benefiting from going through this again this is just this is so personal for me and i just i love god for it for bringing me through this whole process again and also on one of these sides you can subscribe to the channel and get notifications whenever a new teaching is available and even better if you email me your email i'll add it to our sunday morning here's the email address right here i'll add you to our sunday morning uh, list that sends our latest worship and teachings right to your inbox on sunday morning so you're guaranteed to get it amen so and then lastly, if you feel led to help support the feeding of the Word of God, supporting this ministry, if each one of us does part, it'll be it'll the job will get done. 
Thank you so much. Pray about it. Let the Lord lead you and go to heartmountministries.com. So I'm excited. Lord willing, next week I'll have Linda to share her testimony, which is amazing. So don't make sure you don't miss that. It will keep teaching and we'll keep learning and we're going to keep forgiving. Amen.